Hey, what's going on guys? <laughs> so today we are talking about these Walmart cold steel fixed blades. This is the two pack of fixed blades. It's around $20. You can reference my first video or maybe you can go on Walmart's website to see the, the exact price down to the penny. Um, but uh, I finally got uh, a chance to get some use on these. Well, I should say one of them. I focus on the red one. I just didn't even bother with this one because they are identical. It's just, uh, you know, obviously a difference in color here. And I have to say that I am shocked. I really am shocked, and it's in a good way. Um, the big question really, I mean, just right, right out of the gate, do these things suck or are they decent knives? Honestly, they don't suck, and that shocked me. Now, I did go into this whole thing with kind of a negative, you know, viewpoint. I, I really try to stay very unbiased. When you're, you're testing something out, you should totally block everything out of your mind. You should completely, um, you know, take any predetermined ideas of how something's going to perform out of your mind. Now, if you get a $500 Foley knife and you take it out of the box, you're just assuming it's going to be friggin' awesome, right? <laughs> and if you buy a $2 knife, uh, you know, from Walmart, you just assume it's going to suck horribly, right? Sometimes knives surprise you, you know, sometimes that really expensive knife is just not as cool as you thought or just not as great as you thought. And sometimes, quite often, that super cheap knife actually makes you pretty happy. So I will say that I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, this thing definitely took more of a beating than I thought it would. All right, so I ended up using the uh, the red one here. Um, I did not use the uh, the gray one. They're totally identical. It's just I just picked one of them. And I happened to pick the red one. So uh, you know the big thing that that has to be taken into consideration here is the price. I do not think that this is the same quality as all of the uh, you know cold steel fixed blades of yesteryear. Okay, I do think this is just as good. Um, if not better than some of their machetes, okay? So when you're talking about price, it makes a massive difference. If you compare this to a Trailmaster or something or the Laredo buoy, obviously this thing's gonna suck, right? But you have to consider the price. It is always the number one consideration. This thing is not as good as a Laredo, but this does not cost the same as a Laredo, right? So keep that in mind. It, it really plays such a huge role here. Um, if you want a, uh, a high-end, you know, fixed blade, you're going to pay bigger prices, right? But the question is, is the thing going to fall apart? Does the, the steel suck? Honestly, I, like I said, I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, the first thing is this thing took a beating. I really expected this knife so far with the usage I have on it to have some chips and dings in the edge. I really expect this to be more dull than it is. It definitely dulled up. Um, you know since using this, but it's not like dull dull it, it really is kind of surprising and the biggest thing is that the blade did not snap So I did a lot of just wood processing. I just you know a whole bunch of chopping I did do a little bit of batoning with this thing, but one thing I kind of focused on was I would um, <laughs> Let's do my hand here. I would uh, you know chop into a piece of wood. I'd have like an actual like little stump um, But upright here, so I'm, I'm hitting the cut part of the stump and when I chopped in, I would bend my way out, okay? So it put a lot of pressure on the blade, and this, oh, you can hear the plastic, but this thing does flex a lot. Now that's the first thing I did here was the little plastic going, uh, crack, 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 and I really thought this thing was gonna break. It's flexing inside of the plastic handle because, you know, the red parts here are actually plastic. I imagine on the inside, because obviously I didn't see the inside, but I would imagine the plastic runs the whole length here, and these rubber parts, the black, are over molds. I don't think this is solid rubber. I think it's just a plastic molded handle. And then, you know, there's this overlay of rubber to give you uh, some grip. But if I flex this really hard, you can hear the plastic, and it sounds almost like it's cracking or breaking. But I'm telling you, this thing takes a lot of abuse. So it's wiggling around in there. And of course, you know, there, everything has its breaking point. So if you chop this really hard into a piece of wood and you try to bend that thing, eventually, yeah, you can snap your blade. But for $10, this thing shocked me at what it, what it took, everything I threw at it, because I was fully, fully expecting this thing to break and to bring you one unused one and one with a broken blade to let you know it's a piece of junk. Um, I definitely took it past its normal usage limits. 
I did abuse this because I really wanted to see what it was going to take, and it took it. It's still here. Like I said, I mean, you don't want to hear your plastic handle creaking and cracking, right? Um, but again, it's a $10 fixed blade. So, surprising. Very, very surprising. Uh, one thing I will tell you, though, by the handle shape here, the and I use this without gloves. That's also an important note. So, if you're used to wood processing with gloves on, it would be definitely more comfortable and easier. Um, I did feel some shock. Okay, so when you slam into something, when you're chopping wood with this thing, you feel that vibration go all the way down into your hand. It definitely was more comfortable because this flares out the bottom. It's more comfortable to do a loose grip like this when you're chopping. So you don't want like a really stiff, hard grip, like, uh, like really rigid. You're going to feel every bit of that shock and you're going to get a lot of hand fatigue and you're going to have a sore hand. What you want to do is let this kind of, with your ring finger, wrap your ring finger around here. All right, right in this little crevice and let it rock in your hand. You know, I mean, you have, like, not like loose, like you're gonna drop the thing, but you have a somewhat loose, like you're doing a, a flick of the wrist, okay? And that's, it's just way more comfortable when chopping. You're not feeling all that shock. Now that could probably be said for any fixed blade. It's not specific to this one. But what happened was I had a stiffer grip, I'm chopping, yeah, it's uncomfortable. So naturally, I just, I did that. I just naturally loosened my grip up and it made it way more comfortable to chop. And this thing just chopped and chopped and chopped and chopped. Um, it's really, really surprising. It is still obviously a lot sharper down at the bottom here. I did try, you know, some push cuts. I tried making a feather. I only made one feather stick with the thing. The bottom is sharper because when you're chopping, a lot of your, your chopping is happening like here. You know what I mean? You're not using the full edge, especially close to the, uh, the handle. Um... But, you know, nothing broke. It wasn't the worst knife in the world, all right? $20, $21, whatever it happened to be for two of them. Honestly, it's a deal. It really is a deal. Uh, and it's kind of, it's just one of those things. Like, I, I wanted to hate this. And I definitely don't love it. Let me, let me make that clear here. I'm not going to be buying another one of these sets. I probably wouldn't gift this to someone just randomly. Um, you know, compared to like, let's say the, the Ozark trail knife, which is super, super cheap. And I think useful for, for, you know, a very long time, but it's not a total piece of junk. This is better than a lot of the other Walmart fixed blades. Uh, you know, so I was really pleasantly surprised. Now the sheath is super cheap. Uh, I don't think this would last, like if you actually strap this on your side, okay. As a drop down sheath. So you put your uh, belt through here, obviously it's, it's hanging lower. Um, you know, this very cheap nylon with the, the button snap, I mean, it'd probably work fine for dozens of different, you know, you know, taking in and out of the sheath, you know, but if this is like a knife, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go camping with every weekend for the next 10 years, it's probably going to give you an issue at some point. Again, it's not the worst. I mean, for what it is, it's well done. I have to say that. And it's hard, it's hard to say, because it's not like a great sheath, but when you're talking about cheap, cheap knives, yeah, it is a great sheath within that realm of cheap crap, all right? There's no problem with this sheath. It's just cheaply made so that they can sell it for a lot less money, all right? The button snap does work. It is the only retention because the handle flares out here. It does function, keeps the knife in the sheath. Without the button snap, it's just going to fall off if you're doing cartwheels, I suppose. You don't really need the button snap. <laughs> Your fixed plate is hanging like this, and as long as you're on planet Earth, we still have gravity. It will stay inside the sheath unless you're doing something crazy. Even if you're hiking or something, it would be probably rare for this to fall out unless you're like going through some thick brush or something and, you know, branch kind of hooks on it and pulls on a little bit. You know, it, it's probably not going to fall out on accident very easily. So for what this sheath is, it's really not bad. It's actually this drop down is stiff. All right. There's a plastic. If I can, yeah, I can turn this inside out. There's a plastic uh, thin, almost like um, like if you had a five-star notebook or something, that front cover, you know, that like rigid plastic, that's lined, all right, with this drop-down thing, which obviously is also lined on the inside of the sheath, which gives its rigidity and keeps it, you know, in shape, all right? So, yeah, it's really not that bad, honestly, the whole thing. Uh, for, for 20 bucks, I mean, I, I guess if you were, let's say a, well, I'm trying to get this button, snap the button. Am I not lined up here? What are we doing? There we go. Um, if you are a weekend camper, and there's no shame in that, some people only get a chance to go on the weekends, uh, you'd probably be totally happy with this, honestly. You could process wood 
Uh, I don't know about, you know, like batoning all the time. Uh, obviously, if you're processing a lot of wood, you probably shouldn't be batoning anyway. You should probably be using the proper tool, like a hatchet or an axe. But let's say you did have to baton for a whole weekend or something, keep a fire going. Totally fine. I honestly would have total confidence in this to do that. I think at some point, the, the, the breaking point on this guy is, I don't know if this is full tang or mostly full tang. I have to guess it's not. I shouldn't just assume automatically that because it's cheaper it's not, but more than likely, based on all of my experience with knives my entire life, this blade probably goes down into the handle somewhere around here, if I had to guess. It's injected molded plastic around the handle, and it's shaped in a way where it's not going to come out very easily or anything. It's not loose. Nothing's loose at all. But again, you know, I don't have a whole lot of confidence hearing the plastic flex. I'm quiet. But the blade has so much flex on it. It, it is amazing. Like, you know, if you watch the, the cold steel proof uh, test and stuff, um, you know, they'll put it in a vise and they'll, they have like, you know, the whole chart there or whatever. And they'll bend it and it goes all the way out to here before it would snap or whatever. And it goes back. The important part is it goes back. Because <laughs> you can bend a blade all the way like this. But if then it's, it stays in an L shape, it's obviously not helpful to you. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was, I was pleasantly surprised with this guy. I wouldn't want to rely my life on it uh, by any means. However, it works. Honestly, it works. And honestly, it's not that bad. I, I, that's really my biggest conclusion is it's not that bad. I shouldn't, you know, be negative and you know, hope for it to fail or want it to fail or anything like that. I just did, I didn't expect much, honestly, you know, um, seeing Cold Steel being bought out by uh, GSM, if you're not familiar, they obviously, uh, you know, sold the company, Lynn sold it and good for Lynn, you know, Lynn's, uh, you know, he's a marketing guy, he created this company, he created all these awesome products. I believe he has a, a truly a passion for knives and stuff, but it's just business. At some point you get to a certain age and he had an opportunity to make a bunch of money and he did, you know, to, to continue to support his family and stuff so whatever it's no hard feelings or anything like that he doesn't know us anything is as customers you know he could do whatever he wants with his company but uh obviously selling it to a giant company like gsm who has dozens and dozens of these like chinese outdoor branding uh you have to expect things to go downhill because what ends up happening is with cold steel we had quality over quantity they didn't make millions of knives but what they did make was quality, and that's why they had such a strong, uh, you know, um, fan club, really. The, all the Cold Steel fanboys, people make jokes about them all the time. Cold Steel made some awesome knives. I, I don't think anyone can really say that their knives sucked, unless you're completely ignorant or just never had them. They made some of the coolest knives, some of the best designs out there. All the uh, Andrew Demko stuff over the years, all the different designers that they used. And Lynn himself, Lynn designed a lot of the stuff. And not only that, but they obviously made things extremely strong, extremely tough. They proved that with many, many VHS tapes in the beginning, which that's how long ago I've been watching their stuff, to DVDs and so forth. All their proof stuff was extremely entertaining. Uh, but it did actually prove that their knives were usable knives. That was the whole point, right? Uh, and then, you know, the idea is that once they sold, that eventually... And I still feel like this. I think it's going to take some time, but eventually you're just going to see... The quality is going to drop a little bit and the quantity is going to pump up. So let's say before Cold Steel made a fixed blade and they made, you know, 5,000 of them or 10,000. They made 10,000 of this fixed blade and they sold them for 100 bucks, right? That, that model, that business model works fine. Obviously, Cold Steel made a bunch of money, right, over the years. They were a successful company. But instead of selling for $100, what if we sell them for $10 and instead of making 10,000, why don't we make a million? You know what I mean? So that's what we have now. We have this morphing into, let's just make a lot of them, but make them cheaper, you know, for a different clientele. It's not for the Cold Steel fanboys. If you've been buying Cold Steel knives your whole life and you bought this one, you may like it, you may not. You'd probably be disappointed just because it's such a, a change from what you're used to. You know what I mean? It has the Cold Steel logo on there, but nothing here says Cold Steel at all. This could have any branding on it. It's not a bad knife, but it could be not a bad knife and it, it could be called Cobra Knives, you know, or Fang Knives or some Chinese name or something like that. You know, Yang Yang Knives. It, it wouldn't make a difference. You know, it could be a, a German company. It could be, 
you know, um, a South African company, it really doesn't make a difference. My, my, I guess my only gripe here is that it doesn't feel like cold steel. Nothing about this makes me think it's cold steel except for seeing that logo. And that's why GSM bought this company because they have a strong name. And though that name sells knives. If you go to Walmart and you see the Smith & Wesson knife, most people, not, not you, because you, the viewer, has a little bit more information about knives and stuff than everyone else. Most of you guys are knife, collect are knife collectors and you know users for many, many years. So you have the, the know. You have the, the insider knowledge about this kind of stuff, right? But the average guy, just Joe Schmo, not a knife collector, just walks into Walmart, goes over to the outdoor section, sees a knife, and it says Smith & Wesson. You know what he thinks? Oh, Smith & Wesson, they make great guns. Very well-known American company. I'm going to buy that knife because I want to buy an American knife. Having no idea that not only is it not made in America, but it's not made by Smith & Wesson either. Okay? Same thing with Winchester. Same thing with Remington. They're not making those products. But Walmart, they use those names. And these, these companies, they license these names to slap on their cheap products to sell more of them because they're selling a promise. This logo here is a promise. It's a promise for quality. It's a promise for performance. And that's why they gave Lynn Thompson a bunch of money to use it. And that's good business on their end. All I hope is that they do truly keep quality. But it's not going to be in this stuff. This is pretty good for what it is. It, it, like I said, it was very surprising. And it's, it's fantastic for the price. But it's still not cold steel. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. It's just... For me, as a Cold Steel fan and a user of their products for, you know, two plus decades, um, it's just, uh, it's just different. You know, things have changed. Everything changes in the end. And, you know, I can go on and on about the whole thing. It's not, it's not a sob story. You know, it's whatever. But I'm here to tell you two things. Number one, this is a great knife for the price. It really is. I can't deny that. But it's not a Cold Steel knife, if that makes sense to you. So if you want to buy this because you're in the market for two fixed blades this size that aren't going to immediately break on you, you'd be happy with that. But if you got a cold steel t-shirt or a cold steel hat or a collection of cold steel knives and you just happen to mosey on into Walmart and you see these on the shelf, you might not be happy about it. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, that's it. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Of course, if you have these knives, uh, please give me your feedback as well. Uh, it is what it is. I mean, they're, they're not that bad. There's, you know, inherent, um, you know, things I don't like about it just because of what it is, but it doesn't matter what logo's on there. That wouldn't change anything. Uh, for the price tag, for what it's selling you, it, it's awesome. It really is. It, it, it far surpasses some other cheap fixed blades I've had. Um, this would actually work for a while for you, and you could be probably pretty confident in, in you know, light situations here and there. Um... But again, the whole Cold Steel logo is throwing me for a loop. I wish this thing said something else on there. That's all. So that part will always disappoint me, to be honest. From here on out, any Cold Steel product, it will be questionable to me. I'll have to wonder, hmm, is this when they're getting you know, cheap with their products? Is this the turning point? Is this the knife they're releasing right now? Is that the one that's going to disappoint everyone and start putting people off of the brand? Because they're still making great knives. And they're still, like, you know, Lynn's still involved as far as I know, as far as designing and you know, giving input and things like that. But, you know, the quality control, what, where things are made, all that stuff's just out of his hands. It's not his thing anymore. So he can't control any of that. All he can do is give him feedback. So anyway, that is it for now. Um, if you do like cold steel knives, I mean like OG cold steel knives, uh, go buy them because that pool will eventually dry up. Um, yes, they're coming out with new designs all the time. And, and since the, uh, the sale, they, they've had some different knives come out and they look cool. They look good. It's just, it's early on in this transition. And I just, I feel like in the future, you know, it's just, it's going to be different. That's all. It's going to be different. Now, when it comes to this particular knife, this is like the outlet version. Okay. So something I've learned being a married man now, <laughs> you know, my wife has taught me all kinds of stuff about things I've never had an interest in, like purses, let's just say, like coach purses. Okay. So coach, obviously uh, most people know what a coach purse is but they have outlet stores where you can go get them a little bit cheaper. Now there are specific models like this that are only made to be sold cheaper at the outlets. So when you walk into an outlet store and you go, wow, these are some pretty good prices on here. 
That's because they were made to be cheap to be sold at the outlets. You will not see those designs at a regular expensive coach store. And that goes for, you know, pretty much across the, the board there too. There's certain, uh, you know, clothing lines where you walk into the store and this is what you're used to for their quality, but then you go to their outlet store and they have specific models that are only made for the outlet. Here's another example, Black Friday, right? So if you go into Walmart all year round, you could buy expensive TVs and you could buy cheap TVs. But when you go on Black Friday and you have that amazing Black Friday deal where you get like your 55 inch TV for like 150 bucks or whatever, those TVs were specifically made in the thousands and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands probably for that particular sale. So it's not the regular stuff on sale, it's stuff made specifically for a sale. So what you do, you know, if you know this or you're, you know, aware of this, you start questioning the quality. You know, so I mean, this thing did surprise me and you guys know I'm always honest with stuff as much as I want to hate this. I don't hate this. I hate the logo is on this. But if this was like Wrangler, you know, some random crap logo on here, I'd tell you that this is a pretty, pretty decent knife, on, you know, for the price and a pretty decent deal. But it's the Cold Steel logo that's bothering me so much. But hey, that's what it is. It's out of my hands. So hopefully you guys uh, understand what I'm talking about here. Um, this is not your regular cold steel thing that you're used to the same products that you're used to this was made To be sold at Walmart in the in the mass quantities that they have to pump them out, but it's not total junk All right, so there's that So, you know if you got 20 bucks or 21 dollars wherever it happens to be and you're curious I mean buy it for yourself and try it out, but I was very pleasantly surprised. I don't like the creaking of the plastic It, it, it just it kind of Creeps me out a little bit. Definitely should do that. Let's see. This is a fresh one. I never did this. But I mean, it flexes. It flexes like crazy and it has not, uh, you know, broken or anything. So now here's another thing too, because these are being made on a mass scale now, um, you can't guarantee that quality control. It might be hit and miss. You might watch this video and you go out, let's say you and your buddy go out and you both buy a pack of these. You start chopping on yours and beating on it. You're like, oh, yeah, Jeff was right. This isn't that bad at all. And your buddy does the same thing, but your buddy's breaks, you know. That's just what it is. Maybe your buddy's was, you know, wasn't molded properly inside or something. Or maybe had a hairline crack in it. When you're buying these cheaper things, you do get a wider variety of, like, hit and miss quality control. Some of them suck. Some of them are okay. Some of them are great. I I've always found that, too, with the Ozark Trail Knives, you know, because so many people get them. And they all, you know, obviously in the knife community, they talk to each other. It's like, oh, I got this knife. Oh, I love mine, but eh, mine's not that great. Or some people might buy two or three of them, and they find that they're not created equal. So you don't have the consistency in quality because it's cheaper like that. So that's where, again, where people might not want to roll those dice and say, hey, does my $21 buy me a good one, or does my $21 buy me one of the lemons, you know? Who knows? But at least Walmart has a great return policy. I'll say that. So if you are bummed about it or if it breaks or something like that, you can just return it. It's really simple. Even if you don't have a receipt or anything, you get the store credit. So anyway, that's it for now. That's my opinion on these Walmart cold steel fixed blades. Definitely could have been worse. Um, we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. But like I said, this is not your normal, you know, cold steel knife. This is specifically made and marketed to be sold at Walmart to the masses, not the cold steel fanboys, not to knife people specifically just to anyone who just wants a fixed blade. Now you have to keep in mind too, people are shopping at Walmart, it's not like everyone's a knife collector or a knife user or a, an avid outdoorsman or outdoors woman. You know what I'm saying? Half of these knives that are sold out there aren't gonna get used very hard at all. So people will just think they're great. You know, if you're like just some dad and you're having a barbecue, right? And you have, you know, some shrubs maybe blocking the neighbor's view so you have a little privacy. And let's say those shrubs are growing a little bit long and you're having your family over for a big old barbecue during the summer, you go down to Walmart, you're looking around, you see one of these knives, you go, oh, that's pretty cool, and you buy it, and you come home, and you, you know, start hacking at your bush, and all of a sudden, it's just lopping those branches off, like really thin branches, but it's cutting them off, and you're very impressed. What a fantastic knife. And that's it, it goes into the garage or something, or <laughs> your workshop, and it doesn't get used for another six months, and, you know, that's like the place for Walmart knives. It's not for people who are specifically using these knives day in and day out. You know what I'm saying? It's a disposable product. If this happens to break, like I said, you could return to Walmart or buy a new one because they're affordable enough not to get, 
you know, too pissed off about the whole thing. So just understand the purpose of these things. It's not really meant for me and you, the collector and user. It's just meant for the average person, you know, who's not going to use it all that much. And, and in that case, yeah, it's great. It'll probably be fine. You probably won't even use it enough to actually dull it fully. So it'll work for you for probably years. And for 10 bucks each, that's, that's a great deal. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's all for this one, guys. Again, I welcome all the comments from people who bought these and used them. I'd love to hear your opinions about them as well. Um, but like I said, I was, I was actually impressed by them, uh, but it's still sad. It's sad to see that logo on there. It just doesn't belong. Anyway, that's all. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.